development for the part 3 of the polarization uh, topic. Uh, in the earlier class, we discussed about uh, Jones vector and Jones matrix. Uh, in today's lecture, we will talk about uh, Stokes vector and uh, similar to a Jones matrix, we have something known as uh, <coughs> uh, Mueller matrix. Okay, so, we will talk about that particular approach. So, as we have discussed earlier, uh, you give an input and that input is defined as a Jones vector and then you go through uh, a series of optical elements and that optical element transfer function of that particular optical element can be given as A1, A2 and A3. And the output is E1, right? So, input is E0 that is a Jones vector. Output is uh, again E1 uh, which uh, is defined by Jones vector and then each of these optical element can be defined by a matrix that was Jones uh, matrix. Now, uh, the E1 that is the output can be given in the form of the all the transfer function uh, uh, of the optical elements and then uh, also multiplied with E0. So, you have A3, A2, A1 and then E0, right. So, this order actually is required to uh, get the actual final output, right. Now, in the case of uh, Mueller matrix that we were discussing now uh, is also very much similar. So, you have uh, instead of Jones vector, we have Stokes vector now as an input. And in the output instead of Jones vector, we have again here, we have Stokes vector output. And instead of the uh, Jones matrix, we have uh, ma Mueller matrix. So, it, we have M1, M2 and M3 for the same three optical elements. So, uh, the same optical element can be having both uh, Jones matrix as well as um, <coughs> Mueller matrix. Now, the approach is also the same. So, you have S out, that is the Stokes vector output is equal to M3 m2 m1 uh, into s in right uh, the only change is that it now it is like 4 by 4 matrix uh, jones matrix is uh, 2 by 2 matrix but muller matrix is by 4 by 4 so we have around 16 element of each optical element so instead of jones vector now uh, jones vector and jones uh, matrix we are going to use stokes vector now the stokes vector itself is like 4 by 1 matrix uh, and your muller matrix is have like 4 by 4 matrix for total element of 16 uh, size. Now, there are few differences between Jones vector and Stokes vector. Uh, first, we consider about, so these are the main def uh, definition, that is you have unpolarized light source. The natural light that you see in front of you is like a, uh, from the light that you see from the sunlight is actually unpolarized light source. Uh, we also have polarized light source, partially polarized light source, that is uh, it is it, it, it's having two different direction of polarization and it's propagating together. One of the example is uh, a circular polarized light source. So, circular polarized has two different plane polarized light source which is having a phase difference of 90 degrees and they are trying to propagate together in the same direction. And then you have a fully uh, polarized light source that is it, the that plane wave is polarized only in a single direction. It's not oscillating in any other directions. Okay, so the Jones vector is only considered for fully polarized light source. So, you cannot actually consider partially polarized light source and unpolarized light source. So, for considering those, you have to move towards the Stokes vector. Uh, it is, the Jones vector is more of a, a compact form, just a 2 by 1 uh, vector size to define a polarization, very small one, uh, while the uh, Stokes vector is kind of more detailed form of a representation of polarization. Jones vector could be more useful for coherent light source uh, coherent light beams and because it actually maintains the phase throughout the propagation. So, that is kind of an assumption that we do while we are working with Jones vector, but uh, <coughs> when the phase of the light actually uh, fluctuates as it propagates, then you can consider the uh, Stokes vector. So, these are the different kinds of assumptions that we can uh, choose from when, when we try to propagate the light source or based on the light source that we have, we can choose whether it is Jones or a, a Stokes vector that we can uh, uh, move ahead with. And then about the combination, so we talk about partially polarized, unpolarized light source, fully polarized light source. So, can we use some kind of polar, uh, combination of different different uh, polarization? So, that only a combination of fully polarized light source is kind of uh, possible, but in the case of a uh, uh, Stokes vector, you can have a very complicated combination of uh, uh, polarized and unpolarized light source that is kind of possible in the case of Stokes vector. Now, let us see uh, the Mueller matrix, now how, how it is defined and uh, for each of the optical element. Now, we talk about horizontally uh, linear polarized uh, polarizer. In that case, uh, the oscillation is only in horizontal direction. The electrical field is oscillating only in x direction. 
In that case, the Jones vector is given by 1001 that we have already discussed and derived uh, in the earlier uh, sessions. The Mueller matrix of the same horizontal uh, linear polarizer is given by a 16 uh, um, component matrix that is a 4 by 4 matrix. Uh, and over here it's 1100, and then rest of the elements of 0000, 0000, 0000. Okay, and this half is added in front of the uh, 4 by 4 matrix. Now this is the case for horizontally polarized light source. Uh, for linearly polarized light source, it's 1 minus 100 0, 0, minus 1100, 0, 0, and rest of them are zero. Right. Similar to this, if the light is polarized in 45 degrees, then you have a specific Mueller matrix. If your light is polarized in minus 45 degrees, it is a specific over here. So you can see that it is kind of a, uh, a conjugate of the uh, plus 45 is conjugate of minus 45. You can see the diagonal elements actually becomes negative, the rest of them kind of are the same. And then we have quarter wave plate uh, and quarter wave plate uh, uh, with, horizontal, with, with fast axis in, as a vertical and quarter wave plate with a fast axis as horizontal. Right? So both of them have, have a different Mueller matrix. Okay. So uh, these are the different different Mueller matrix available for different uh, optical elements. Now let us try to understand like uh, for a uh, real life example uh, what happens. So this is one of the first very simplest example, the unprocessed light source that you see all around us. Uh, you have the Stokes vector. Again, we defined the Stokes vector before. That is I, Q, U, and V, where I is equal to the summation of horizontally as well as the vertical process light source. Q is the uh, difference of horizontally and vertical process light source. U is the difference of light polarized in 45 direction. Uh, for, uh, 45 degrees um, uh, and different and um, <coughs> uh, with the difference of light polarized in minus 45 degrees and then V is the term which is the difference of right circular polarized light source uh, with the uh, left circular uh, left circularly polarized light source. So this is the Stokes vector and what you give an incident is an unpolarized light source. An unpolarized light source you give an input to one of the uh, element of the uh, uh, of the, uh, one optical element which is polarized in minus 45 degree okay and you give what is the output now i want to know what is the output stokes vector that is 4 by 1 matrix uh, if if i use this uh, mueller matrix uh, approach unpolarized light source if you see the unpolarized light source it is uh, polarized uh, uh, in uh, uniformly in all the directions so that's why you have uh, 1000 as the stokes vector now uh, we know that uh, the Stokes vector, oh sorry, the Mueller matrix of uh, linear polarizer polarized in minus 45 degrees is 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Uh, this is the matrix, Mueller matrix of the linear polarizer oriented in minus 45 degrees. And then this is the input that you see over here, that is the unpolarized light source, the Stokes vector of an unpolarized light source. And this is the half that comes in in, uh, in addition with the Mueller matrix. This is kind of given to you, so you don't need to uh, kind of uh, um, uh, work around with that. So that's kind of thing which is given to you. So that's how you have to work with. Okay, so if you do this multiplication mathematically, you can give to this number that is half of one zero minus one. Sorry, uh, minus uh, minus one and zero. So that means that if you uh, incident an unpolarized light source to a, a linear polarizer oriented in minus 45 degrees what you get is half of the intensity of the in initial inten uh, of, of in initial intensity of your light source um, <coughs> um, and it is actually polarized in minus 45 degrees so that you can actually understand from your stokes vector okay so this is how you can do a very simple example of mueller matrix uh, you can see how mueller matrix could be used to understand what is a uh, output stokes vector uh, considering a particular input Stokes vector. Now, one more example could be uh, this over here. So you have un again you are shining an unpolarized light source to two uh, two optical elements. The first optical element is horizontally polarized light source, and then you have second uh, optical element which is the vertical polarizer. Okay, the first one is horizontal polarizer, and second one is vertical polarizer. So we try to understand over here what would be the uh, matrix for each of them. So you here, as you see, it, it, it is a M2 into M1. So it's important is that it is not M1 into M2, but it is M2 into M1, right? So you start uh, with the, uh, you start to move backwards, okay? So uh, what is the Mueller matrix of, of vertical polarizer? 
so it's actually 1100 1100000000 that is the uh, Mueller matrix of the vertical polarizer and that of the horizontal is uh, uh, 10 uh, 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 <coughs> and then you just multiply with each other and what you actually get is 0 0 0 0 okay <coughs> okay so uh, so that means is that the multiplication of both of them when I do it it becomes completely zero so whatever is my input it will not matter so and and what you will get output will always be zero uh, um, regardless of what polarization of light is given in the incident okay so here your output would be always zero so <coughs> that's uh, how you can actually uh, use the Mueller matrix there are a lot of complicated examples that we can take and quantify what is the output thank you